Hi, I'm Gail Minogue, and it's good to be back with you, I thought, today in numerology. And you know that that's part of my background, is working with numerology and numbers and symbols of numbers. Uh, Today I wanted to talk about the Bible and numbers, and not to bore you in Sunday school, because it's nothing to do with that, but the everyday numbers that you hear uh, in your own life, I'll touch on that. But in the Bible, we it's loaded with numbers. In fact, it tells you your days are numbered. And there's also a chapter uh, called Numbers. So it's, it's riddled with numbers. And numbers really are used to represent, actually, information other than what you think. So unfortunately, people take the Bible literally. It should not be. It was a symbolic uh, message board, really. So I want to speak with the number one, and the number one and the number one through nine are the only numbers there are. So I hope I can touch on each one and give you examples of how it's used and what it really meant. Not what you think it means, right, what that verse means, but what it really means. So in the beginning, is, which is you hear in the beginning, there was, quote, the word, and that you will find in the word was God or the word was flesh. And everything you speak, which is true, uh, is make sure you watch your words because they become flesh. They be, may materialize. And so when somebody says, I'm broken, say, okay, guess what? You are. And so in the number one, you hear it in John chapter one. Okay. Word is the numbers made manifest. So this is really representing the creative idea or the beginning of creation is the number one because one starts it all. One and then two and three. and So one is the beginning and has representation all by itself of what the number one means. We always think of one as the new beginning. If you're in a one personal year, it's a new beginning for the next nine years of your life. The number two um, is the development of choice. So in Matthews, it says we are warned that there is duality, there is danger. So this is a house divided against itself okay, cannot stand. Um, You hear this over and over again. If to agree, it should be done. And that these are different Matthew verses. So the number two is what they're talking about, that you are, it's the pairs. And the number two is always pairs. You can't have two without the other. So you cannot divide these. So a house divided against itself, it cannot last. So it means that the number two disappears if you take half of it away. And you're going to see that in in a lot of now, a lot of political tone is that uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if you take the United States and you divide it into two parts, it will will eliminate the duality. Okay, so the number three symbolizes the Trinity. So one, two, three. We use it a lot in baseball and other areas. We say on the third strike, you're out. So three, the three disciples in this um, of Jesus in the New Testament goes into the Garden of Gethsemane, and those are Peter, James, and John. And they don't stand for Peter, James, and John. They stand for the number three, and that is light, life, and love. Those are the three. And so... And you hear these examples. Jesus goes away. He prays three times. Each time he returns to find them asleep. So the inner meaning is that Jesus felt that light, life, and love, the three parts, were forsaking him. And um, so you understand, too, that the number three is the combination of one and two. It equals, or the sperm, the egg, creates the baby. So one, two, three, you go. That's why three is a completion number. So the first completion number is the number three. Not four, but three. And so that up represents light, life, and love. Again, the Bible is just really symbols. You've got to understand what the meanings are. And so, and this goes on, if two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. So you put these two together, and you combine it with the three, here I am, it's the complete. So uh, this refers to the three parts of the mind as well, and the states of different consciousness. So the story, what we'll say of Jesus, is the number three. On the third day, he rises from the dead, okay? 
Uh, he rose after three days. He was denied three times by Peter. And the fact that he was crucified between two thieves, okay, is symbolic of the divided system of belief, which has stolen many of the true teachings. That's why it, there's the three there, the two other thieves. So um, Jesus Christ sits down with the 12, which is the one and two again, which is three. And so 12 is the higher vibration of three. And remember that Judas um, deceived him for 30 pieces of silver. So three is all over. And this is the symbolic, but you have to understand the, the deep meaning of three because he was against the vibration of three. The four, the number four stands for law. And so the law is order, which is the first law, one of the first laws of the universe is order. And the physical reason is logic. So 40 is used as a scripture a lot to indicate a completed cycle of retreat from things of the world in preparation for something better or something better to follow. So we do 40 days, uh, 40 nights. We do 40 years in the wilderness. So in the morning of the fourth day, um, after he dies, Lazarus lays in the tomb. So the fourth dawning is when spiritual and understanding releases us from the grave of materialism. Again, this is all symbolic, but nobody reads this. We take this literally. It has, it's a metaphor. So at the fourth watch, just as gray dawn was breaking, they beheld one walking on the water. And this refers metaphorically of the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which is what we're now in, and, and the age of community, which is what we're trying to create. This is why there's so much destruction going on, and the old is dying, and we have the fights over the keeping the old. You're finding people want to go back to the 50s, um, but it's all part of this same order. So we, the numbers are very prominent. This is a quick review, but it's a quick, quick lesson. And just to make you think about, wait a minute, the Bible is not the story of this or that. It's representing, letting you know. It's messages, but they're not literally taken. You understand this is all symbolic and metaphorical. So we go on. The five is always about change. The number six, number seven. And um, there is always the big prominent number seven, which stands for rests. And the rest is always in the seventh year. The, the soil rests seven. You're supposed to rest in your seventh personal year, but usually we don't. But it's about ceasing. And the wall of Jericho uh, was not about warfare whatsoever, but rather was about the principle of the number seven, because again, they go wild on the wall seven times, they, and again, the word. So victory was achieved by means of the positive vibration of sound, which had been built up this tremendous power. Remember, sound is powerful. Sound is represented by numbers. So if you go around a wall, metaphorically, seven times, and you do the seven repetitives, you, this, literally the wall fell down. I have, I have exercises here on just the number seven, which I should do a YouTube on. I should just do it on the seven. So you can learn from it and use it, exercises in your life to create and manifest, because it's a very powerful manifestation number, but you got to know how to use it correctly. So moving along here, because I don't want to put you out to sleep, the number nine is used a lot. In the number nine, you see it, oh my God, you see it in all these weird stories of the 666, which adds up to 18, which is a nine, or the 144,000. Um, both of them are very bright to the number nine. The nine is the finishing number. And they'll say the 666 is a mark of the beast in Revelations. That refers to humanity functioning at the materialistic, unregenerated level. That's all that is. And these two numbers mystically refer to the evolution of humanity, which is what we're going through. And that either they're either lost, which is the 666, or they're saved, which is 144,000. They're both number nine. So it's taking that number nine, the finishing, and bringing it to that higher level. So humanity is called what they call the hand of God. You have a necklace with the hand of God. It demonstrates the exact same principle, the number nine. So hand is a nine-powered word. That means if you add all the letters up, you get a nine. Okay? Just add the numbers up in the word hand, 
reduce it, you'll be at number nine and refers to humanity as what we'll call God's helper in bringing forth that better level of humanity. So remember, Christ dies in the ninth hour, which is the hour of prayer. Um, and then he says it's finished because that means the nine is completion. So the nine statements of the blessings of sermon, I mean, this goes over and over on the blessings of sermon and amount. Is again, it shows a completed cycle. So <clears throat> the New Testament, is, love is a nine powered word. Add up the numbers of love. L is a 12, o, you know, O is a 15. And uh, you will get a number reduces to the number nine. So what we'll say is the supreme source, the divine intelligence, some people call it God, uh, is love and that is dwelt in love. So this again is the number nine. We go to another higher number, uh, is the number 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, the 12 is always about the higher level of three, the creative process. 12 brings it up, that's the highest number. It's completion, so you get 12, we use it in everyday life. We got a dozen eggs, we got 12 hours, we got 12 disciples, and um, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 characteristics of the 12 signs of the zodiac. So each tribe is representing a sign of the zodiac. So you're gonna think of this in a different way. Do not take the Bible literally. It'll drive, well it does, it drives whole cultures insane and behaves in a way that doesn't help humanity. So no tribe, no characteristics, no constellation, none of these were good or bad. They're just 12 signs and they correspond to the numbers operating in the life of each individual. And as each individual reincarnates, they have to go through, be born in a constellation of one of these 12 signs. And remember, we reincarnate over and over, we reincarnate over and over. And we go through each of these 12 signs of the zodiac. So for maybe, I'm an Aquarian. So for the, that couple of thousand years, <clears throat> I learned the vibration of the Aquarian. And what's that constellation teaching me? So remember, Jesus 12, chose 12 disciples. Uh, again, relating to this, the vibrational force under the number 12. So remember, um, Abraham in, received his covenant and his new name when he was 99 years of age. Again, that number nine, that ending, okay? So he's given the number, he, he was given the letter H, or Hey, meaning light, and having a vib higher vibration of this number nine. So again, another example, Saul became Paul, and he, when he added the spiritual number seven, which the P. P is the seven, one of the seven letters, if you add up if you get P, it's the uh, 16th letter, and that is the P, the one in six is seven. So it may sound complicated, but it isn't. You'll just find this over and over, and you will find this in your own life. Um, and there's more here, but I don't wanna bore you with more. I just want you to absorb these bits and pieces of understanding the Bible, understanding it in your own life. You, I have clients who say to me, uh, I keep seeing this one number repeated over and over again. I see the number two, and I, everywhere I go, I see three twos, or I'll see three fives. And there's reasons for that, but you have to go back to the first time you actually saw this, or you this started in your life, and find out what was going on, what dream did you have about it, pay attention to your dreams, and remember that this is very common because your consciousness then will begin to attract this no matter where you go. If I'm focused on the number 222, it's gonna show up everywhere for me. I'll read it everywhere because I'm focused on that. I'll bring it right in. Remember I said your word is extremely important and you will manifest through the word. So if you say you're poor, you will be poor. So the words and the numbers in the Bible are all basically representation of deeper, higher spiritual meanings. They are not to be taken literally, but you have to understand what those numbers mean. And they are very, very important, but not to be directing your life in a way that we are because we don't understand the numbers and the metaphor and the symbols behind them. We just take it literally and then we condemn and we judge based on this or that religion. Um, so remember, spirituality is very different than religious, okay? we can have a very spiritual person who's not religious at all. So I just wanted to fill this in 
to give you this bit of information on the numbers. Remember, in your daily life, rest in the seventh year. To see where you find the numbers showing up all the time. When we're in a four year, all through the 40s, it was about order and hard work and productivity, whether it's 40 years in the desert wandering or four, four, I mean, 40, four, whatever years, 400 years, 40, 40, 40, four is the number of order, production, and preparation before you come out and change in the five, because five is the agent of change, 50. Five. And you'll see again that in the Catholic Church up until about 1859, they allowed abortion because they didn't believe the soul entered the body till the fifth month. Again, that number five. So you, now it's ch now man-made laws have said no abortion, period. That'll all change again because we're going through this phase of changing constellations from the old fear base. Piscean age to this uh, rational age, enlightenment of the Aquarian age. So I hope I didn't bore you with all this. Um, I look forward to a next meeting with you. Remember, I'm going to have a Zoom program coming up on the 22nd. I do a class going deeper into numerology. We're going to cover a lot of information that's going to help you. So go to my website. You can find it there. I also have a book. Um, Divine Design, How You Created the Life You're Living, which will help you just understand your basic numbers of your name and life path. You have a program. You're supposed to be here a long time. Okay? You have to understand and live by your program, but we don't even know we have one. So I hope I didn't make you just sort of just depressed. But anyway, I look forward to our next meeting. This is Gail Minogue. You can find me on gailminogue.com. I would get the book, at least get that, and I would see if you could join my class on April 22nd, Saturday, 11 a.m. California time. Thanks for listening.